Hey there, Lone Star College family. This is Megan Hopwood from the Lone Star College North Harris Library. And happy Tabletop Thursday. And in honor of Tabletop Thursday, we're going to talk about how you can play Dungeons & Dragons or really any kind of a tabletop role-playing game online. So let me tell you a little bit about my experience with Dungeons & Dragons and with tabletop role-playing uh, in general. Um, I have been playing D&D and other tabletop games for about five years now, and I have been the Dungeon Master for my uh, group for the past two years. I have been a Dungeon Master in both uh, Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, and before that I used the Buffy the Vampire role-playing game system to run a spooky library game. It was a lot of fun. So I'm also a home brewer. I invent my own content. We'll talk more about home brewing uh, in a little while. Uh, but when I play D&D, I like to play a barbarian and smash things with a giant ax or a giant hammer. I'm really kind of indiscriminate with what I smash things with. Uh, and I also like to cast spells as a wizard. It's a ton of fun. So without further ado, let's get started a little bit. Uh, let's get started talking about how we're going to play D&D. So first, there isn't a wrong way to play D&D, but the really important thing is being on the same page as the people that you're playing with. You wanna be really clear up front with your group and talk before you get started about the kind of player experience you want to have, whether you're the DM or the player. DM stands for Dungeon Master. Do you want to forage for food for 30 minutes and find spell components? You can get really into nitty gritty to where you have to keep a spreadsheet for everything. I personally don't uh, like to play that way. I think it, it, I don't want to manage a spreadsheet while I'm playing Dungeons and Dragons uh, any more than I have to. But another side of that is, is the story more important than the game mechanics? If it takes an hour to cast a spell, but the effect would be really, really cool, do you bypass that hour long wait that you would have to have? Is that okay? What rules are you ignoring and what rules are you strictly going to follow? So these are conversations that you want to have up front so that everybody has a expectation of how the gameplay is going to go and an expectation of what rules they're going to need to follow as they're playing. So let's talk about some different ways to play D&D or any kind of role-playing ta role tabletop game. There are a lot of different environments that you can be in, a lot of different rule sets. A lot of these are available online, especially older editions of these systems are available for free. There are like huge banks of PDFs if you search for them. But if you like having a fantasy style uh, environment, then Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition is a great place to start. You can also try Pathfinder the Warhammer 40k universe, and built off of that is the Iron Kingdoms universe. If you're a little bit more into science fiction, there is Starfinder, which is similar to Pathfinder. There's the Star Wars and the Star Trek RPGs. There's also Warhammer that's more set in a sci-fi setting. And then there's Shadowrun, which is kind of a future techie style with some magic built in. There's more like urban fantasy, so if you are into somewhat urban horror, The Call of Cthulhu is a great system to try. Vampire the Masquerade can be incredibly fun. And then Monster of the Week, which kind of follows the layout of things like Buffy the Vampire Slayer or Supernatural, where you're fighting like a different monster every game session or every uh, arc that you build. Or if you're playing with your kids or you want to play with some younger folk, there is a My Little Pony role-playing game. There's a, a game called No Thank You Evil, which is a lot of fun. And then Tiny Dungeon is another one that you can try out. These are all built to have like really simple rules and simple dice so you're not rolling the big D20s or the D12s those that, where you have to do a lot more math and addition. These are all different options for you to play D&D &D or, or a tabletop game the way that you want to play a tabletop role-playing game. If you have never played before, it can be really intimidating to jump into a game that has literally hundreds of pages worth of rules. If you don't know what to play, I would highly recommend looking into 
other people playing. A really great way to learn is uh, learning by example. These are some people that play D&D. Part of the Dungeons and Dragons renaissance has really been a lot of different podcasters and YouTubers and groups really uh, putting out there their play sessions. And these are some that I have personally enjoyed. The Adventure Zone is a podcast from three brothers and their father who are all playing Dungeons and Dragons together. They're actually on their third game iteration. They played Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition. They played Monster of the Week, and I'm not sure. I think they're back to 5th Edition now with their current game. Critical Role is a YouTube series from a lot of different voice actors who are playing Dungeons and Dragons together. Titan's Grave, The Ashes of Valkana is a YouTube channel that has several voice actors and YouTube stars playing a system that is similar to Dungeons and Dragons, but it only uses D6s. And they're playing that with Will Wheaton. Dungeons and Daddies is a podcast that I've really been enjoying lately. They are playing Four Dads whose children get lost in the D&D setting. And they are trying to figure out how to get them back. And when they were transported from the real world to the D&D world, they gained all kinds of uh, powers and gained their classes. They've been really funny, a lot of fun. Dames and Dragons and Venture Maidens are ones that I'm just kind of getting started with, so I can't tell you a whole lot about them, but I've been having a whole lot of fun with all of these stories. With all of these, caveat, some foul language, some adult themes and concepts, but enjoy at your own risk. So where do you get an adventure? Don't feel like you have to make up an entire story and have something to tell yourself. You can, and that's called homebrew, and we're going to get to that in just a second. But Wizards of the Coast are the people that own Dungeons and Dragons, so you can actually go to their uh, sites and they have a lot of stuff up for free at this moment, at the time of this recording. You can check the Dungeon Masters Guild. It's a really great website. They have a lot of stuff that you can download of adventures that you can go on that have a preset story and dungeons already drawn out and monsters that will attack you and all kinds of great stuff that you can do. Or if you prefer, you can also try doing some homebrew. And homebrew is making up your own stuff. So it's anything that you create on your own. So as your adventure building, one place that can help you do that is a website called D&D Beyond. It has places where you can build characters. So uh, putting your character together and setting all of your statistics. It has rule sets. It has the basic rules for free, but you can pay for other systems and other upgrades, and then it also has some monsters already listed out for you. Again, it has kind of the base level D&D stuff that are part of the basic rules and basic monster guides, but for the more advanced stuff, you do have to pay in. As you're building adventures, especially if you're doing homebrew, sometimes it can be really tough. I cannot tell you how many times I have had a non-player character or an NPC talking to my group and they go, oh, what's your name? And I go, oh my gosh, I forgot to give this person a name. I literally had a town where everyone was named Steve. It was weird. My players thought it was funny, but it gave me so much stress. The website Donjon, but they have name generators. They have dungeon generators, city generators, shop generators, monster generators, item generators, anything that you might go, oh, there's a chest here, and your players open it, and they go, well, what's inside? And you go, oh, I forgot to put stuff in this chest. You can can instantly generate some of those things. So let's take a look at that really quick. So there are a lot of apps that can help you kind of keep track of your adventure and keep track of everything that you're doing. So there are dice apps. I'll tell you, when we're playing online together, rolling dice is kind of an auditory nightmare. So having a digital dice app can be really helpful. There are a lot of free ones. And actually, if you go to Google and you actually just type in roll a d20, it'll roll a d20 for you. It's pretty great. There are apps that keep track of spells and spell casting that are really helpful. There are uh, bestiaries that will list a bunch of D&D beasts and all of their stats and information about uh, those beasts. There are apps for character sheets, and there's apps for tracking initiatives. So when you're in battle, what order does everybody go in? And these can be really helpful. A lot of them are free, can really help enhance your gameplay, especially when you're playing online. Okay, let's talk about some map tools. 
D&D doesn't have to be a visual medium. You don't have to make maps, but it can be really helpful, especially when you're playing online and want to have something to look at to help keep you engaged while you're playing with your with your friends. One tool that I use is called Inkernate, and it is a web-based tool for building maps. You can use it for free or it has a paid subscription. It's about $25 a year. And this is a map from my current game that I'm actually playing. We actually did a hand-drawn version at first where all of my players got a quarter of the map and they got to kind of draw in what their quarter of the map looked like. And then I put it together using this tool. So because this is one that I use and I subscribe to, I'm going to go ahead and show it to you really quick here. So this is Incarnate or Incarnate, depending on how you want to pronounce it. It's up to you. It gives you a solid water back first, and I'm going to color that in with land. I like to start from a solid base of land and then cut my lakes and rivers out of that. You have choices on how you want the edge of your circle to look. When you're drawing either the rough edge or the smooth edge, you can adjust the size of your circle. So when I make uh, lakes and rivers, I just kind of do it a little randomly. If you think about geography, you might think about the different shapes that you remember from, from there as far as peninsulas and archipelagos and lakes. So I'm going to use the color pick tool here to start coloring in my map. We're going to do this a nice green here. I think I want this to be a swamp later. And then I'll go ahead and do kind of a mountainous region through here. I'll put this down as my base. And let's do some desert right through the center here. And then we'll go back to a green. We'll kind of fill that in throughout the rest of the map. So I'll make my color into a little larger. And you'll notice you don't have to be super careful about your edges. Once you go over the water, it won't color that over the water. The water stays as it is. Fill in these little side pieces here. And since I want this as a swamp, I'm going to make it a darker green to tell it apart from the rest. So now I'm going to move on to the stamp tool and pick some mountains. I don't really like the snow-capped ones for that color. Let's go with volcanoes. And then you can change the size of your stamp as you go. So put some larger ones, and then we'll accent it off with some smaller Volcanoes down here. And let's add some trees. I want some I want some jungle trees for this uh, swampy area over here. Oop, those are a little too big, so I'm gonna select those and delete them. And then I'm going to go back and start over changing their size a little bit. You can change the size of something on the map, but sometimes it's easier just to delete and start over. So I'm going to put in some hills. We'll leave a little valley there. Some sand dunes. Let's throw some pine trees over here. So really it's about the environments that you want to create. Like what do you want your players to encounter? I'm going to also find within that stamp tools some villages to put on my map. We've got some different different looking encampments. Here's an orc town for kind of a cross. So we have a villain to go get. Use that walled city. And why don't we just throw a castle kind of across this river? Cool. I can use the text tool to label my towns. Let's just call this one Meganville. And we'll call that one Jeff. You guys know I'm not great at naming things. So 
this is incarnate or incarnate however you would like to pronounce it is fine so let's go ahead and get back to talking about some other map tools that you might want to try another tool is a uh, dungeon fog and this is also a web-based map making tool it is also free and has a paid subscription option, just like Incarnate. It's a little bit more expensive. I gave this one a try on the free version and I didn't have a lot of luck with it, but I've seen some really cool maps. This is one that I saw online from a blog called Return of the Dungeon Master. I don't want to completely discount it because I had a hard time using it, but if it's something that you want to give a try to, absolutely give it a shot. Another map tool is Wondercraft. Now this one is a desktop based. It's one that you purchase like a software. It's a one-time purchase of $30. And again, this is not one that I use, but I wanted to make sure that you had lots of options when it came to maps and map tools. This is one that I found uh, via Reddit and it's a really beautiful map. I really like how it came out. So if that's something that you're interested in, definitely give it a try. Or if you're not into making your own maps, but you want to see what other people have made, you can absolutely look online for maps. Some people have Patreon pages where they draw things for D&D. &D. You can check out Reddit slash D&D &D or r slash D&D maps. Those are great places where people post a lot of free content for you to use and download. And of course, if there's something specific you're looking for, you can absolutely just search for it. Lots of people put out free content that you're able to use. So now you have some tools to help you set up your game. You have some ways to build character sheets through apps or D&D Beyond. You have some ways to build maps and visual aids. So now let's talk about where you can actually play D&D. So one place you can do that is on Roll20. It's a web-based application. And it is also like many things uh, that have to do with tabletop role playing online. There's a free version and there's a paid subscription version depending on the kind of tools you need. When I use this tool, I use the free version and I really haven't had a whole lot of trouble with it. It does have built-in voice chat, which can be really helpful. Let's take just a moment and I will show you guys my current campaign. So this is Roll20 and this is my current campaign that I'm running with my friends. We designed this map together I used Incarnate to draw it, but we started with a hand-drawn map. Each of my players got a quarter of the map, and they kind of told me about their culture and the kind of race that lives there. We have minotaurs, shapeshifters, humans, dwarfs, and tieflings with a central city where they all kind of congregate. So something nice about Roll20 is in the chat log, you can actually roll dice. It's pretty great. You can go down to where you would type any text you want to share with your friends. And you can actually just type slash roll. And let's go ahead and roll 1d20. Oof, not great, not great. But we can also add modifiers, so I can type slash roll 1d20 plus 2. Let's see if we could do any better. Oh no, it's worse, even with plus 2. Bummer. So I can roll dice directly here. It's kind of nice that we can all just share our dice rolls. If you go up to the settings, you can enable the voice chat if you'd like to be able to use the in-house uh, audio. I can add assets here. I can upload images that I want to be able to use on the map. So if I have different kinds of monsters that I want to have on the map or different kinds of pictures, I can do that there. Up at the top as the dungeon master, I can change what map we're looking at. So let's go ahead and look at the city map for the central city. Great, so now that we're here, we can change the zoom and we can scroll around the city as well. 
I can use the icons that I've made to uh, put tokens on the map so that we know where people or certain things are located. So I'll take one of my characters here. This is Lee. And right now I have control of Lee and I can move him around to different parts of the map. So let's say he started off at Stockwell's Tavern. I can actually just use my arrow keys to move him around to different parts of the map. So let's say he needs to go up to the central clock tower. I can also, in the settings, give uh, players control of different tokens. So I, this one is controlled by Ian. Ian is the player's name. And Lee is the character's name. Uh, I used just pictures of my players so that it was easier for us to know who was who, but I did put their character names on there. So let's look at a different map. I'm going to go into some of my old maps here. Let's find the right one. So this was part of our recent adventure. This was a kind of side-scrolling map where they were going in through a cave that was a uh, old ancient dragon. So you can put enemies on the map as well. You can give them names, you can put in their st stats, you can leave notes on them. And these will only be seen by you if you're the dungeon master. If you're the player, you don't have to worry about that. You can use this circle icon in here to leave different uh, markers on your enemies or on your players. So this dragon's been defeated, so I'm going to put the big red X on him so we all know that he's dead. There are also other little icons you can put on. So there's a skull and crossbones for poison. It can represent whatever you want. You can also flip them around using the advanced settings. Flip them horizontally, flip them vertically. So all of my players are down here in the far corner and you can use the map to represent where you want them to be. It just kind of helps having a visual story aid as you guys are working together. I'll show you one more. And you can put tons of maps on here. It's really nice. So this is our Minotaur Gogurt Factory adventure where we saved the Gogurt Factory from takeover by the evil corporate espionage Minotaur. So we have everybody gathered around here. We've got different parts of the factory. So when I made this map, I made it with a grid. And you can see that it doesn't quite line up. And that's one problem that I haven't quite been able to get right. I haven't been able to fix the scale so that when I make a map, in Incarnate, it lines up perfectly with the grid that's in Roll20. So let's look at one final map so I can demonstrate one more tool. So this was a tower that my characters climbed. And sometimes you don't want your characters to see the entire map at once. You only want them to see where they are right at that moment. So one tool is called the Fog of War and then you can reveal parts of the map as you go. So if we activate the Fog of War, confirm reset. Now my characters would see a completely black map, but I will see it kind of shaded in. And then I can slowly reveal parts of the map to them as they explore. So they got to the first floor. Now they can see the second floor. and you just kind of click and make the selection of where you want them to be able to see. This is the polygon reveal tool. And that way your characters are still surprised by what's still left to come on the map. 
and the final part of the tower with the big evil necromancer. And then you can always reset it if you need to. But that is called the Fog of War. So let's go ahead and look at some other D&D tools. Another online or web-based application where you can play D&D is through Astral Tabletop. It's similar to Roll20, and just like Roll20, it has free and paid subscription options. This is not one that I have used, but I saw it recommended by a lot of different people, so it might be one that you want to give a try to. This one's kind of new, so I saw this via Reddit, and it looks pretty neat from what I've seen. It's one where you have to set up your own server hosting or use a online hosting site to host your server. It is completely free though, which is really cool. It looks pretty neat. So if you have some uh, tech know-how and uh, can follow their instructions on their website to set up your server, this could be a really great way to play online together. And to be completely honest, you do not have to have any kind of like special tool to play D&D &D together. You can really just use voice chat. The visual aids are not required. They can be helpful, but honestly, if you can share pictures via something like Discord or Skype or Zoom, you guys can talk to each other that way. So there are a lot of different places where you can do that. We said Discord, we said Skype, we said Zoom. Uh, WebEx is an option. Twitch, where you can stream your D&D live. So if anybody else wants to watch, they can come hang out with you. Google Hangouts has uh, voice call options and then just like a group phone call. You can really do this anywhere. So I hope that gives y'all some ideas on how to play Dungeons and Dragons or any tabletop role playing game system that you prefer online. I'll put links in the doobly doo for all of the websites and tools that we talked about today. If you guys have other tools that you use and would recommend, we'd love to hear about those in the comments. If you guys have questions about D&D &D or how to play D&D &D online or something that you're trying to do that you're looking for a tool for, we'd love to hear those questions as well and try and find answers for you. But with that, thank you guys so much for joining me on this Tabletop Thursday to talk about Dungeons & Dragons and happy adventuring to you all.